clouds. They float on lifeless planets all across the universe, yet here on Earth, they're vital to our life and comfort. So what are the ten main clouds, and just how extreme do they really get? For millions of years, eyes all around Earth have been gazing at clouds, saying hello to some much needed shade, or anxiously awaiting an approaching storm. For all that time, they existed as these amorphous, ever-changing blobs that we had no great understanding of. It wasn't until the 19th century that clouds began to be officially classified. We now know they occur from air rising, from warm ground temperatures, pressure differential, or by flowing up a mountain, followed by the water in the air cooling, expanding, and forming a nice white cloud. Well, at least they usually appear white from the light passing through all the water droplets inside. But if the droplets are small enough and the cloud thin enough, you may see the cloud take on a beautiful rainbow-like form called cloud iridescence. This makes for some of the most beautiful skies. But at the same time, clouds may also appear in ominous dark gray, like with rain clouds, which are darker because the water inside is larger and closer together, allowing less light to hit the underside, AKA the part that we see. However, if you were to look at these gloomy clouds from a different perspective, you'd notice that the tops of all daytime clouds, including rain clouds, are a brilliant white. So to say their one color is a little misleading. While you're up there, you may also take note of the fact that clouds cover 70% of Earth's surface at any given moment. And with all those clouds, naturally, come a lot of cloud types. In fact, there are more than 100 cloud types, but most recognize only 10 main cloud types. These main clouds fall at three different levels of height. We'll go into some of those rare clouds later, but for now, let's start with the main ones on the lowest level, up to 2,000 meters above the ground. Cumulus. These fluffy, sunny day clouds are some of the most common and what you'd probably find if you typed cloud into Google. They tend to stay separated and take on any number of interesting puffy shapes, making them the cloud of choice to go cloud gazing and find shapes in the sky. Stratus. As opposed to cumulus, stratus clouds are generally quite undefined. They're not too dark, enough for a light drizzle, and they tend to make the skies a bit dreary as they can block out the sun. They're broad and flat and hang low, kind of like a big blanket. But if they hang low enough and touch the ground, then it's perhaps better known as fog. So, a foggy day could also be called a stratusy day. Stratocumulus. Stratocumulus, as the name implies, kind of like a mix between cumulus and stratus clouds. Sitting at the low level, they're puffy like cumulus, but in long formations like stratus. If stratus clouds are a blanket, stratocumulus clouds are a bit like a blanket with big holes in them. Nimbostratus. Just like stratus, nimbostratus are undefined and all-encompassing. However, they're darker and they don't just drizzle. These are the true rain clouds. In fact, if you see nimbus or any variation of it in a cloud's name, you're probably talking about one that can make it rain. They can also produce snow or sleet, but never produce lightning. And while these clouds are found on the low level, they're our largest clouds so far, and they're also found a little higher up on our next level, the mid-level, where clouds form between 2,000 meters and 7,000 meters. Altostratus. These clouds are very similar to stratus, wide and layered, but higher up, so they feel a little bit less smothering. They also create great conditions for optical effects in the clouds, such as the aforementioned cloud iridescence, or halos around the sun. Alto cumulus. These clouds are very similar to stratocumulus, puffy clouds grouped in large patches, but as they're higher up, they'll look smaller from the ground level. You may also see some gray shading at the edge of these clouds, indicating their thickness. Seeing these will usually mean the weather is calm and cozy. The last level for these main clouds, the high level, 
includes clouds that form between 7,000 meters to 13,000 meters up. Due to their high altitudes, these clouds are almost always composed of ice crystals. Cirrus. Perhaps the most beautiful and elegant of the clouds, Cirrus clouds are easily identifiable. They're wispy, thin, bright strands high in the sky. They will never precipitate as they are too delicate and may provide the final touches on a beautiful sunset as they turn bright orange or pink. Cirrostratus. The final form of the stratus variants, Cirrostratus clouds, are also quite delicate. Being stratus and spread so uniformly, they look translucent, like a wedding veil floating in the sky. At times, these clouds can be so long that they can cover the sky further than the eye can see. Cirrocumulus. Higher still than the stratocumulus or altocumulus, cirrocumulus clouds are similarly structured, but mostly composed, as mentioned, of ice crystals. The cloud puffs are so high and uniform that many believe they look like fish scales covering the sky. So, we've covered nine of the main clouds, but before we get to the 10th main cloud, aka the king of all clouds, let's quickly cover some more unique clouds that can be found on Earth. Lenticular. Technically a variant of one of the cumulus variants, these clouds form as wind flows over large objects like mountains and look like UFOs hovering above. Recently, in 2022, Mount Rainier in Washington State was mistaken by many as erupting, when in reality, there was simply a lenticular cloud sitting on the peak. Morning Glory Long and tube-like, these rare clouds look like they're actually rolling over the ground below. The only place on Earth where these predictably occur is the Gulf of Carpentaria in Northern Australia. Having been researched for decades, it's thought to be caused by the unique land formations around the Gulf, allowing breeze to hit from both sides. This allows cold night air to hit a warm inversion layer and create a rolling pattern. Then, in the humid Australian mornings, moisture forms clouds inside the rolling air. Billow. They may look like cartoon ocean waves in the sky, but be aware if you see them, billow clouds form due to unstable and turbulent skies. These clouds are rumored to have inspired Starry Night by Van Gogh. Asperitas. The newest official type of cloud, introduced into the International Cloud Atlas in 2017, Asperitas clouds are wavy and undulant, like a dark and stormy sea. Although they do not cause them, they are associated with thunderstorms and are often found in central USA on the Great Plains. Pyrocumulus. One of the most intense types of cloud, pyrocumulus, are formed as a result of extreme heat, like with wildfires or volcanic eruptions. High amounts of smoke and ash in these clouds can make them one of the most opaque clouds and can be brownish in color. With a strong enough fire, these clouds can become gigantic. Noctilucent. Noctilucent clouds are the rarest clouds on Earth, but they're not just rare. They've been described by scientists as the highest, driest, coldest, and rarest clouds on Earth. They form in the mesosphere, 80,000 meters above the Earth's surface. For perspective, all of our main clouds form in the troposphere, which peaks at 13,000 meters high. In order for this to work where it's that high and dry, the ice crystals that make up the cloud can only form at temperatures below negative 120 degrees Celsius or negative 184 degrees Fahrenheit. So, will you ever see one? Maybe. While noctilucent clouds are normally found on the North or South Poles, they've been seen as far as Oregon in the USA. Mamatis. While not exactly clouds by themselves, Mamatis clouds are a feature of clouds that are quite unique. They form by air sinking rather than rising like in most clouds. The result is tons of little pouches or bowls hanging from the bottom of a cloud, and because they're so weird, they're quite fun to look at. But steer clear of these clouds, as they can be indicative of quite severe storms. And while they can be scary at the bottom of clouds, they're most intimidating when seen where they most commonly appear, under the king of clouds itself, the cumulonimbus. 
Finally, onto our tenth and final of the main clouds, Cumulonimbus looks out of this world. Easily spanning the medium and high levels alike, Cumulonimbus dwarfs other clouds, as it can be thousands of meters tall. They're so tall that in mature clouds, the wind near the stratosphere makes contact with it and thrusts the top of the cloud over in what's referred to as an anvil top. And while these clouds are truly awesome, they also bring with them the most severe weather that a cloud can bring on Earth. The cumulonimbus is the only cloud capable of thunderstorms, hailstorms, torrential downpour, and even tornadoes. They are truly the greatest, most terrifying, and spectacular clouds on the entirety of Earth. So, there you have it. The ten main clouds, along with seven extras, that you'll find on our world. Let us know your favorite cloud, or any we may have missed. And the next time one catches your eye, take it all in. You may be the last to set eyes on it before it fades forever into the skies. Thank you.